Hey there, welcome to my channel. Let's continue with our series. In this episode, we're going to work on Kafka. In the previous episode, we have seen how we can communicate with the microservices using synchronized communication, where I have explained the synchronous communications core features in terms of what is the edge cases we, we have to use the synchronous and asynchronous communication, right? Let's have a quick recap. So as you can see, we have two microservices. One is catalog and the order microservice. So while our user is coming to order microservice, then while user is going to create the card, then certain amount of data that is going to be needed from our catalog microservice. As an example, the product availability, product stock, etc. So that is we need to validate right before adding to the card, right? So in this scenario, we cannot use the asynchronous communication, right? So you might have thinking like what is synchronous and what is asynchronous? Maybe some of you already know what is asynchronous and synchronous. So asynchronous communication is the parallelly we are, we are applying some changes or we are raising an event and we are not waiting for that the event result. And in the future, sometimes that the event result will come back to us, right? But we are not blocking our events at all, right? So this is the way a synchronous communication is happening, right? And the synchronized communication in terms of like, we are raising an event and we are waiting for the result. We cannot parallelly go ahead and uh, do the another stuff, right? Because those data are extremely important. That's why we are, we're waiting for that data, right? So in this case, you can see while we are creating the card and managing the card, the asynchronous communication is not going to be fit properly. So that's why we are using the synchronous communication. Synchronous communication can be achieved in the different ways in terms of like uh, using HTTP calls, or maybe we can use RPC call, or maybe we can use the, the WebSocket as well as. So those are the things maybe I will be going to explain in a, another uh, video tutorial where I am going to explain different ways of communications with the microservices. But let's stick with the topic. In the other hand, while our order service is going to create the order, then our order service need to inform the catalog service. I'm gonna say, hey, catalog service, we have created this order by using these items and the quantity. Uh, kindly please deduct the stocks from that particular items, right? So what are the items we are using here, right here to, to create the order, right? So otherwise, if we are not going to deduct the stocks, then the, the future orders, we cannot be complete, right? We cannot be fulfilled because uh, the stock will be go out from here, right? So this is the way order service has to notify to our catalog service. And in that scenario, can you see right now, there is no needed of any kind of the synchronous communication, right? Because order service should not supposed to wait for any feedback from our catalog service. So only order service responsibility is to just to notify catalog service. These are the items has to be deducted from the stock, right? So in this case, asynchronous communication is going to be properly fit in this in this scenario, right? As a part of the asynchronous communication process, it can be it can be achieved in the different different ways, right? So. Without Kafka or without message broker also, we can achieve all this communication. That is already, I have explained one of our microservice series. That is uh, where, uh, where I have properly explained like how message brokers are working and what are the substitute of message brokers, right? If you're going to watch that series, then definitely you can, you can get the idea. So I have shared the link below. Now let's understand what are the available options for asynchronous communication, right? So I would say number one choice is the message broker where the, all the complexity message broker is hiding underneath. Uh, it is giving some kind of interface where our consumer and the publisher can talk to each other and it can be share the events. So while our, our order service is going to produce some kind of events, then catalog service can consume all these events to get the job done. And another way of achieving the asynchronous communication is uh, we can directly call one HTTP call from our order microservice to catalog microservice. And we are not waiting for response at all we will simply fire that HTTP call and we will forget about it, right? So this is the way we can achieve the asynchronous communication. There are some other, other ways also we can implement, but um, we, are, we are not going to discuss all of the stuff. We are going to focus on the Kafka today. All right, then let's try to deep dive into Kafka. So what is Kafka? So there are a lot of events are producing by our application. If you're going to take an example of Express app, it is producing a lot of events in terms of listening to port, and responding to uh, HTTP calls. It is emitting events and it is handling a lot of stuff to, to in order to spin our web server. In short, Kafka is helping us to process all those events asynchronously in real time 
with the port loading mechanism. So Afosi Kafka is a distributed event streaming platform used for building real-time data pipeline and the streaming applications. That is, we are going to implement in our microservices where both the microservice is going to communicate with the help of Kafka in asynchronously. Now let's discuss about the core components of Kafka. So these are the six core components we have where topics, producers, consumers, brokers, and partitions, and offset. So we are going to discuss one by one. What is a topic? A topic is a stream of related messages in Kafka. It is a logical representation and a group of categorized messages, right? And the topics are distributed in partitions just for uh, scalability and to maintain the fault tolerance, right? So eventually, uh, these, uh, these topics are, are distributed in across the, the multiple servers as well as, right? And it's an every topic can have or like records, right? You can see uh, we have the, uh, the couple of records in terms of payment confirmation, right? Update stock or create order. So these are the, these are a couple of records we are, we are having here. How record will be look like? A record can have headers, it can have a key, value, and timestamp, right? The header and timestamp is optional, but the key value is uh, mandatory, right? So we're, we're going to send a kind of key and that key can have a value, right? So this is how uh, we are just pushing the records to our, our topics. And while these topics, uh, these records are laying down inside the, the topics, in, inside the partition, and it is maintaining some kind of offset. So this offset is helping us to, to consume certain record from our Kafka topic. Now let's discuss about the producer and consumer, right? So producer is a kind of application that is producing uh, events and pushing the data uh, is a form of the record and those records are pushing to a certain topic, right? While producer is producing some kind of events or sending some data, then it can decide which partition and which topic has to send all those data, right? And consumer is a kind of application which is going to consume all the data, all the events or records that is come to a certain topic in terms of like in our case, order events, right? So while our producer is uh, is sending some kind of record as an example, create order, then our consumer, if it is subscribed to that, uh, that event, order events, let's say, then it is going to grab all the data, whatever we are sending right here in this create order, uh, order uh, record, that is going to be available in consumer instantly. So now you know how topic is work, where does it go? So producer is producing certain events and pushing those data to the, to the topic. And our consumer is consuming all those data by subscribing to that topic. Now let's have a look at the broker, partition, and offset. If you see here in the partition, each topic is divided into partition, right? So in our case, the order event is divided into two partitions. And partitions are allowed for parallel processing as each partition can be read independently by different consumers, right? And partitions are replicated across the brokers to ensure the data durability and high availability. So that's why we are we're distributing all the all the topics into different partitions, right? So this is how partitions are works. Now, if we look at the offset, you can see like we are we are having offset zero, one, and two. So all these records are sitting down in the particular place. If you can see, if you can compare with a kind of array, all the index, the similar way the offsets are working, right? So offset is a kind of unique identifier assigned to each record within the within a partition. It keeps track of the position of a consumer in a partition, right? So now let's have a look at the broker. So now let's understand what is broker, how Kafka cluster is look like. A Kafka cluster is made up of multiple brokers. You can say another word, broker is a kind of server, right? So which is containing the partitions, right? In, inside the partitions, we are having all the topics, all the records we, are, we can store inside the partition. As we have seen here in the first diagram, while we are storing our topics inside the partitions, it is, a, it is storing it's a form of the record, right? And this is how the cluster, the Kafka cluster is look like. So cluster is a combination of the multiple brokers or the servers. And inside the brokers, we have the partitions, right? So brokers are responsible for managing partitions and the messages of the topics spread across the partitions, right? And partitions are spread across the brokers. You can see one broker can have like multiple partitions. We have like partition zero, one, two, three, right? Now let's have a look at the setup. How the setup will be look like? If you see here in this diagram, we have our Kafka clusters. There are multiple brokers are here. And uh, we have our zookeeper. We have our producer and the multiple consumers. Those are the consumers we are, we are grouping together. That is going to subscribe to our, our, our topic that is called order events. And producer is going to uh, produce uh, some kind of messages and going to push to the 
all the data to the order uh, that topic that is called order event right and if you see here in this diagram you can see like zookeeper you might have thinking what is zookeeper so zookeeper is a kind of utility tool this is going to help us to manage our kafka clusters uh, topic configuration leader election and configuration management and it is helping us to, to synchronize coordination and handle the fault alert mechanism right Overall, you can say Zookeeper is helping us to, to manage our Kafka clusters, authentications, settings, management, etc. Perfect. So now you've got the clear understanding of how the Kafka setup is look like and how Kafka works with the consumer, producer, and the topic, etc. And how partitions are working and what is the broker exactly, how uh, what is the Zookeeper and why Zookeeper is needed, right? So we, we know everything. But here I have listed a couple of questions just to help you out to understand better the mechanism. All right, the first question is how multiple instances will handle the same events? Right. As an, as an example, the create order. So while our producer is producing one event, as an example, the, the create order is produced by the producer, then if you see here, we have two consumers, right? So how these two consumers are going to consume the same event? So in this case, if we have the, the multiple consumers, then we can group it by group ID, right? Then what is going to happen? While we are we are subscribing to certain events to a topic, then you can see it is distributed in the in the partitions, right? Then the one of the consumer from the group is only only one consumer is allowed to consume that particular particular topic from there, right? And once there is that that message is consumed, then rest of other consumers will be stay idle, right? This is not going to be happen like you know both the customer will be consumed the same topic or same same message at the same time then it is going to be a duplicate work right so it is going to create let's say while we are we are producing an event called create order then if your if our consumer is consuming those topics and creating the order two two orders will be will be created uh, by ending up right so this is not going to happen right so this is the way the consumer group is working right what will happen if the consumers are down and the producer send an event. This is the same scenario uh, just like RabbitMQ in our previous microservice, right? While our producer is producing an event and it, it is pushing to Kafka and it is not consumed by the consumer or maybe consumer was the down at the time, right? So it is going to store, it is going to be uh, stored in the Kafka, right? Until the consumer is come back and they consume it, then only it is going to be, and going to be wiped out from our partition, right? This is the way it's going to work. So it doesn't matter whether consumer is online or offline, right? Once the producer is producing something, it is going to store right there, right? And another question is like, when need to create the topics, who is responsible to create it? Definitely our producer is responsible to create the topic, right? So while we are going to initiate our application, then it can be manual or it can be automatically, we can just like create our topic. So these are the, these are the basic questions it may arise while you are thinking of the, the integration of the Kafka. So this is what we are going to do. We will be having our microservice and our microservice can have a producer also or consumer also, right? So as an example, our order microservice can become producer some for, for some cases and for some other cases, it can have maybe consumer also, right? And it is, it is going to be connected while it is needed. As I said, like if it is only, it, it has to produce something, then we are going to connect with the producer or if it is only needed to consume, then only we are going to connect to the consumer, right? And in exceptional cases, like if our microservice need to become a producer and consumer bot, then we are going to connect bot, right? And you can see the producer is producing the event, pushing to the topic, and consumer is consuming the event uh, this, exactly from the same topic, right? And Kafka is handling end of the day all, all this mechanism, right? So these are the things we are going to implement in our source code, all right? I know like it's a lot of talk and a lot of theory, but this is really essential to understand right before jumping into the code. There are a lot of tutorials you can you can get it directly like spinning our, our, our Kafka and integrating the code, like pushing data, consuming data, but there are no uh, deep understanding of like an explanation, right? So I'm just uh, trying to make it easy just to, to understand right before writing some code, right before implement something, at least try to understand the mechanism, right? All right, in the next episode, we're going to jump into the code right away. All right, then see you in a bit.